services today. It's Sunday, uh, August the 7th, 2022, the ninth Sunday after Pentecost. Jesus said, it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. It is God's promise from the very beginning to Abraham, to the early church, and to the little flock of which we are a part of in today's gathering. Faith, God's baptismal gift, trust the promises of God, have no fear. Our service begins on page 94 with Holy Communion setting one. Please stand if you are able. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our opening hymn is hymn number 629, Abide With Me, 629.
There is continues on page 98. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you.
we share it together. We are all God's children. God commands us to tell all people that Christ Jesus is Lord. As committed followers of God, we will reach out to all people to teach the gospel and to baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated for the reading of our lesson. God promises childless and aging Abram that a child of his own will be his heir and that his descendants will number as many as the stars. Abram trusts God's promise and through this faith he is considered righteous. Our first reading today is from Genesis 15. After these things the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. But Abram said, O Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue childless, and the heir of my house is Elizer of Damascus. And Abram said, You have given me no offspring, and so a slave born in my house is to be my heir. But the word of the Lord came to him, This man shall not be your heir. No one but your very own issue shall be your heir. He brought him outside and said, Look toward heaven and count the stars, if you are able to count them. Then he said to him, So shall your descendants be. And he believed the Lord, and the Lord reckoned him to him as righteousness. Here ends the first reading. Thanks Thanks be to God. Keep them alive. 
Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Abraham and Sarah exemplified the vision of faith that people of God enact in every age. Their hope and trust in God's promise allowed them to face an unknown future and to receive the promise of God. The second reading today is from Hebrews 11. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Indeed, by faith our ancestors received approval. By faith we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God, so that what is seen was made from things that are not visible. By faith Abraham obeyed when he was called to set out for a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. And he set out, not knowing where he was going. By faith he stayed for a time in the land he had been promised, as in a foreign land, living in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked forward to the city that has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith he received power of procreation, even though he was too old and Sarah herself was barren, because he considered him faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one person, and this one as good as dead, descendants were born as many as the stars of the heaven, and as the innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. All of these died in faith without having received the promises, but from a distance they saw and greeted them. They confessed that they were strangers and foreigners on the earth, for people who speak in this way make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of the land that they had left behind, they would have had opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better country, that is, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. Indeed, he has prepared a city for them. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. If the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, 
he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Grace, peace, and mercy from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus, the living and risen Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you all? Good. Good. A little cooler in here. You may notice we've closed off door one and three. Uh, the council had decided to do that. Uh, so uh, we're waiting uh, for funding to put in an electronic door there so that when you come, it automatically opens, just like Kevin will. <laughs> But that's down the road, so. Um, just an update, where's the air conditioner going, Robert? Well, we're waiting for the um, electrician. Oh, we're still waiting on that? Yeah, we need, a, we need to get the bid from the electrician and vote on that, and then we can move forward. Everything, they, they're getting the equipment. We signed off on the commencement uh, um, letter. So it's just a matter of that. So we're waiting still on a bit from the electrician, so keep praying that that'll be low. I want to thank Ernadelle and the entire Moore family, including Nathaniel and Alexis. Uh, we had quite a day yesterday. In three hours, uh, we took over 800 pictures, and we gave away over 1,000 pencils and candy and uh, rulers and all kinds of notebooks, whatever we could find. And uh, thanks to the generosity of Ernadelle and the caregiver um, account, um, it was quite a successful day, I would think. So thank you. Ernadelle was red in the face. I had to get her a Gatorade. So. <laughs> it helped. And it helped. So I had to have one too, but thank you. Thank you all for being there. Welcome you, Margaret, and Mary's home, I hear. She is. And how's she doing? She's doing better than before she, this happened. Oh, that's good. It's kind of a blessing yeah. in disguise. That's what we like to hear, yeah. that we're doing better. It's amazing. Okay, well, let's get into the message today. You know, I always try to begin with a question. I never get a response, but the question today is, what are you afraid of? What is the number one thing that, you, I know we're afraid of a lot of things, but what is the thing that you're afraid of the most? Because that's where the lessons are today. The first lesson talks to Abraham, right? Abraham, the father of all nations, right? And it starts off by saying right there, do not be afraid, Abraham. The Lord is talking to Abraham not to be afraid. Why? Well, because Abraham was afraid, like all of us. We're all really afraid of something. Now, I don't know. Most of us, I think, are afraid of God. Not too young ones, of course. But when you get our age, and I'm the youngest one here, in most instances, we're all afraid of dying. So we don't even talk about it, right? And that's probably the biggest thing that we're afraid of as we grow older, isn't it? Afraid of dying. Afraid of what's going to happen. And why are we afraid of dying? Well, we're afraid of dying because well, what will my spouse do or what will my children do? Uh, we don't want to leave this world, do we? We don't want to leave our children. We don't want to leave our boys. We don't want to leave our girls. We don't want to leave our grandchildren or our great-grandchildren. We just like the world like we have created it, right? Did you notice I said as we have created it? Because we've created our own little world, haven't we? Most of us are pretty comfortable. I mean, even, even our churches do that, don't we? We create our own little church. I mean, we have our own little church here, don't we? You know, it's kind of a little family church. And we're comfortable with it, right? Because we have created it and not God. God has had a part of it. But see, God's turned it over to us. Do you remember that? 
You remember that God turned the world over to us? Read Genesis from the very beginning. The first book of the Bible says God spent seven days creating the world. And then he said what? Be fruitful, multiply, and take care of what I've given you. All right? So we're in charge. You know, when I was a young whippersnapper, and that's a word you don't use anymore, but I thought I knew better than my parents or my teachers. You know. They were just so outdated and didn't know anything. And then when I got to be closer to their age, I realized I didn't know a darn thing. That they were right all along. And we're kind of that way with God, aren't we? Are we not? Aren't we kind of that way with God? We think um, we know a little bit better than God does, and so we start tinkering with things, right? And we've talked about this the last couple of weeks. As a matter of fact, did you notice that the lesson used, what I shared with you last Sunday, that where your heart is, there's your treasure? See, that's where the Lord is trying to teach us. That once again, we have to turn our will, our life, everything over to God. And that's so hard for us to do. There's a motto for most of the self-help groups, let go and let God. Because it's hard to let go. For instance, smoking or drinking or whatever it may be. It's hard to let go of that. But the motto is, let go of it and let God be in control, not you. And that's the lessons today. Let God control your life. Turn your will and your life over to God. And that's what he's trying here to say to Abraham. And as you know, the story of Abraham was rather, rather unique. He had many sons and two wives and things. You know, even though it turned out to be a great nation, he had a lot of problems because he had family issues, right? Just like we do. And then I want to turn to the gospel reading because there's that word again. Jesus says, it starts right off, what? Do not be afraid. Now, why do you think the Lord is talking to Abraham not to be afraid and Jesus is talking to us and the people in that day not to be afraid because they knew God knew and Jesus knew that we would be afraid because we wouldn't rely on God as much as we should you know it's not right to rely on God God is there for you you don't have to do it all and you know if you have grandchildren and I'm sure Nathaniel and Alexis are like this. Mom, I want to do it myself. <laughs> Nathaniel walks in and says, I'm literally starved. <laughs> That's how he comes into church. I'm just literally starved, he says. <laughs> and Robert says to him, what are you talking about? You had breakfast. But I'm literally starved. <laughs> what is he, six? Six years old, and the little boy's literally starved. <laughs> so I took him over to Miss Janine, and Miss Jean, our hospitality host, fed our little starving six-year-old. <laughs> See how young they are and how easily they learn? I'm literally starving here, Pastor. <laughs> now I can't let a six-year-old sit in service being literally starved. <laughs> right? And I don't know what, I went over there to help him, and I, but they were over there quite a while, so I think he got a second helping, <laughs> if I know Nathaniel, so. But he's literally starved. Of course, I have a little secret about him. Robert asked him, you come to church, get your devil legs. <laughs> that's why he comes to church, but that's okay. The devil Day will bring you to church, and it's kind of ironic, isn't it? Devil Day. <laughs> but that's okay. The story is, do not be afraid of anything. And I know we all are. The way this world is going is enough to scare anybody. 
But we have to concentrate on other things. And that is so hard to do. It's just so very hard to do. You know, Robert and I were just sharing how wonderful it was yesterday that we saw all these people lining up. And Robert said to me, you know, they needed these school supplies, didn't they, Pastor? And I said, yes, they did. And Robert says, you know, I'd put a little tattoo, and they were just so thankful that I put a little tattoo on their arm. They were amazed by their pictures because they were instant. Um, you know, the curiosity of children, where have we lost that people? Just the little things they enjoy. And then he said, Alexa came, she wouldn't wash off her tattoo. She left it on all night and brought it to church today. And then he shared with me something that I think we all need to know. He said, are you coming to church today or do you want to stay home? And guess what they both said? We're going to church. Out of the mouths of a six-year-old and a four-year-old. Robert's doing something right, and so is Christina and her husband. That's what needs to happen. They need to know they're safe in God's house. They need to know they have no worries. They're a six-year-old and a four-year-old. What worries do they have? So what happens to us as we grow older? Why can't we go back to being six and four again and thinking that way? That, you know, there's really nothing I don't even remember when I was six. Maybe you do. I didn't have any worries. Did you? But as we get older, what happens? The worries start piling up, don't they? Because why? Why do our weary worries start piling up on us? It's because of what we do. At least that's my case, maybe not your case, but most of my worries are things that I have caused myself. God hasn't caused them, but I have created them because of my desires. I have shared with you about Psalm 23 last week. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want a new meaning for me. I really don't want anything. And I have to train my head and my mind that I don't. But the world tells me what? You need it. And they even entice you with giving you bucks back and all this other stuff, right? Sending you all this mail that you really need it. You can't live without it. But we can. We can live without it, but we cannot live without God. And that's the story in all of the lessons today that you will not and you cannot live without God and faith in God. That's the story, people, that you must have God in your life and it must be cultivated just as Nathaniel and Alexa are being cultivated. Your parents cultivated you. My parents cultivated me. My church cultivated me. You cultivate me. You make me a better person day in and day out. You really do. To see all of you yesterday working so hard. I mean, it was like 98 out there. It was hot. But they worked from 9 o'clock until way after 1. I was just so gotten by that. You cultivate me. You make me a better person. And that's why it's important to have faith in God. Because as God cultivates me, God cultivates you, and we cultivate each other. And then we grow and we multiply. May God continue to cultivate you, and may you continue to cultivate others. Pass it on.
do not be afraid. God is there for you. Amen. Amen. Continues in the words of the Apostles' Creed, found on page 105 in the front part of the Red Book. Apostles' Creed, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We turn to the prayers of intercession, which are found on the back of your celebrate insert this morning. We want to remember all those on our prayer list, uh, especially lifting up Mary, who's returned home and is doing much better. We thank God for that. We want to continue to pray for Lori's travel and her sister Kathy. We pray for all those that had a need this morning. Trusting in God's extraordinary love, let us come near to the Holy One in prayer. Let your loving kindness be upon your church. Fill all who proclaim the gospel with your spirit. Equip your flock to speak your word of promise and hope in the midst of fear and uncertainty. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Let your loving kindness be upon your creation. Dwell among us and sustain our earthly home. In places of famine, provide nourishment. In places of plenty, fashion us to be stewards of your bounty. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Let your loving kindness be upon your world. Be our helper and our shield in places torn by strife and violence. Raise up, your, raise up courageous leaders to govern with compassion and justice. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Let your loving kindness be upon your children. Look upon all who wait for your steadfast love. Console those who grieve and embrace those who cry out to you. Help us to trust your promise and not be afraid. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Let your loving kindness be upon this community. Fashion our hearts to strive for the way of peace. Strengthen the outreach ministries of this congregation and all who care for those in need. Merciful God, receive our prayers. prayers. With thanksgiving, we remember all who have died in faith and now rest in you. As they place their hope in you, so strengthen us to trust in your promise of new life. Most merciful God, receive our prayers. prayers. We especially repair, pray for all those in need. We especially remember all those in Kentucky that have suffered from the terrible catastrophe of the floods in their area, especially in Hazard, Kentucky, and around that area. Be with them, Almighty God, and strengthen them. We pray for all those on our prayer list, Kathy, Al, Emma, Carolyn, Carlton, Anita, Mary, Frankie, Judy, Lauren, Jackie, Audrey, the poor, the homeless, our veterans, our children, our police, fire, and EMS, the people of Ukraine, the born and unborn, and all those that we name in our hearts before you today. Receive the prayers of your children, merciful God, and hold us forever in your steadfast love through Jesus Christ, our holy wisdom. 
Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And, and always also with you. Share that peace with each other. God's peace to all of you. The offering baskets are before you. We're going to interrupt this week the Global Hunger Challenge. And uh, for all offerings that go in the basket for outreach this morning are going to go to our flood victims in Kentucky through the Lutheran Disaster Relief Program. So that's just today. Uh, the victims of the flood in Kentucky, um, as you well know, they're having a lot of response right now, but they need a lot of help. So anything you can give will be greatly appreciated. The other basket is for the ongoing needs of the church, and I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. As far as I know, 2,000 additional dollars have been collected um, towards the air conditioning fund, so we thank you so much. Uh, let us pray the prayers on the top of page 107. Holy God, gracious and merciful, you bring forth food from the earth and nourish your whole creation. Turn our hearts toward those who hunger in any way, that all may pray, that all may know your care, and prepare us now to feast on the bread of life. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, power, and glory. Forever and ever. Amen. Come now to the table of the Lord, for all has been made ready and prepared for you. Please stand for the blessing. The body and the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Strengthen you and keep you in his grace now and forever. Amen. Page 207. <laughs>
serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. I want to thank Robert for filling in today. Good job. Good job. <laughs>